Welcome to another edition of Highlander News. I'm Abby. And I'm Mara. Long, long ago, several of your teachers walked the halls as students at VCHS. Reporter Alyssa Hatcher takes you on their journey from student to teacher. Hi, I'm Mr. Chillen. I graduated from Valley City High School in 1972. I went to college at Valley City State University. I started teaching at Valley City High School full-time as a band director in 2005. Hi, I'm Mrs. Kaveen. I graduated in 1973. I went to VCSU and graduated in 1983. I was a stay-at-home mom and traveled a lot, and I started teaching at VCHS in 1983. Hi, I'm Mrs. Callahan. I graduated from VCHS in 1979. I went to college at VCSU. I started teaching at VCHS in 1993-94. Hi, I'm Mr. Rorick. I graduated in 1986. I went to VCSU and graduated in 1991. I started teaching at Valley City High School in 1996. Hello, I'm Mr. Murray. I graduated from VCHS in 1989, then went to college at VCSU and graduated in 1995. I taught in Ogilvy, Minnesota for four years, and in the fall of 1999, I took a job here in Valley City. Hi, I'm Mr. Hansen. I graduated in 2000. I went to VCSU and graduated in 2004, and I attended Minot State for my master's and graduated in 2011. I started teaching at VCHS in 2008. Hi, I'm Mr. Nielsen. I graduated VCHS in 2000. I went to college at VCSU and graduated in 2005, and I started teaching at VCHS in 2006. Lastly, we have Mr. Toppin. He graduated from VCHS in 1983, went to college at VCSU, and graduated in 1987, and started teaching at VCHS in 1999. Reporting for Highlander News, this is Alyssa Hatcher. Here are some summer jobs that are being offered to students this year. The Shrine Circus has come and gone. Reporter Riley Seahawk shares the experience. Recently, the Valley City High School Band got to open up for the Shriner Circus. When the circus was in town, it left many people wondering, why is the circus thrown? We throw the Shriner Circus because it's a great fundraiser for our Shriners. The El Zago Shriners is based out of Fargo as far as the temple goes, the middle center. And then we have multiple, multiple units and clubs that work hard to put on the Shrine Circus for shrine activities and fundraisers that provide money for the Shriners to go out and then make more money for Shriners Hospital and Transportation. How many members are part of the El Zagel Shriners? That we have over 240,000 members worldwide. We are still the world's largest fraternity in the world. And besides the circus, what other fundraisers are there throughout the year? We have a few major fundraisers. The Shrine Circus is one of our majors. We have Clown for a Night, which is in December, which is a major fundraiser. Uh, we have a motorcycle ride every year. That's in June, which is another one of our bigger fundraisers. Uh, and then we have a baseball game. That's usually in July or August, depending on when we get the diamonds. Uh, and then we're doing parades all summer, all summer long. We probably do 10 to 15 parades a year. Reporting for Highlander News, this is Riley Seahawk. Up next, we have a VCHS edition of Would You Rather. Would you rather stay overnight at the school with a third floor ghost or spend the whole school day playing dodgeball in gym? Play dodgeball? Uh, spend the night with a ghost, 100%. Would you rather have the key to the tunnels or the key to the roof? Um, the key to the tunnels? I don't so I can get somewhere discreetly. Tunnels, because it's cold and dark and comfortable. Would you rather have a place to park or heating? Place to park, um, because school parking sucks. Yeah. 
Oh, this is a hard one. Probably a place to park. Would you rather have to walk all the flights of stairs between each class or be stuck on the first floor forever? <laughs> first floor forever. Would you rather eat country fried chicken off the floor or drink water out of the buckets in the weight room? Definitely the chicken. Oh, weight room buckets, definitely. Gains. Would you rather spend a day in the office or have six hours of detention? Six hours of detention. I'm used to detention, honestly, so. Reporting for Highlander News, this is Molly Doctor. With prom coming up, a few students share their prom proposals. As semester two comes to an end, the seniors get ready to say goodbye. Reporter Jaden Dudley finds out what they are going to miss the most about high school. <laughs> I'm going to miss football games and homecoming and school dances. Mr. Thompson's class, probably. Why is that? Um, it's just, I don't know, it's a super chill class and uh, we get to talk about basically whatever we want. Uh um, I'm going to miss playing sports with some of my close friends. I'm definitely going to miss my peers and my friends. Uh, definitely history teachers. Uh, sports, tennis, and football were big in my high school careers. Um, yeah, just good vibes with my pals. See my friends every day at school and the basketball team. Um, I'm going to miss everyone, seeing every single person's face every single day, talking to them, joking around, just the entire experience itself. Uh, my friends and sports. I'll be missing my friends, on seeing them on a daily basis, as well as teachers that just helped us learn some things. Definitely the sports, volleyball and the sheet liners. <laughs> what I'm going to miss most about this school, about school in general, is the people. Uh, probably the boys, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout our entire school district, there is only one student who is learning Braille. Reporter Taryn Dudley brings us the story. Braille was invented by Lewis Braille in 1824 when he was only 15 years old. Today, only 10% of people who are legally blind in the United States know how to read Braille, and only 10% of visually impaired students are learning it. Among them is Nevaeh Bach, a third grade student at Jefferson Elementary. When did you start learning Braille? Like, when I was like in preschool, like three or four. Did it take you a long time to figure it out? Yes, definitely. What's your favorite part about Braille? Um, when we do fun stuff with it. What's the hardest part about Braille? Um, that you have to learn all these um, contractions. How often do you use Braille? Mm, here. Basically, that's the most time I use it. When did you start using your cane? Um, when I was like middle of second grade, probably, I think. Then to now. What was the hardest part about using your cane? You have to learn how to sway back and forth. Once you start using a cane, it's pretty hard, but once you get used to it, it's easy. And how often do you use your cane? Well, I don't use my cane at home, but I do use it in school because school has a lot of people. Do you have any advice to give someone who might want to start learning Braille? Be in a quiet area because it's kind of hard to concentrate when you're like in a loud area. Nevea uses Braille to read an excerpt from the snow day written by Isetta Reed. It was snowing hard outside. My sister and I prepared for school. We were hoping that perhaps school would be closed. Reading and learning Braille is not as easy as Nevea makes it look. In addition to learning it the regular up and down way, she also has to learn it sideways in order to type on her Brailler. She also has to learn many tricky contractions. For example, if there's a lone P, that means people, or if there's a lone K, that means knowledge. Braille can be intricate and detailed, but with practice, it becomes easier. Reporting for Highliner News, this is Taryn Dieterly.
Thank you for joining us from Valley City High School for another edition of Highliner News. I'm Abby. And I'm Mara.